What's cracking guys? In this video, we're gonna do something very different. So I'm gonna walk you through the code of the Dino model, which I previously covered in one of my videos uh, from Facebook AI Research. So we're gonna uh, step through the code and understand how exactly the training works line by line in PyTorch. So if you find that useful, let me know and also leave a feedback of what you think about this video so that I can improve it over the for the next for the next time. So this is super experimental. Before I dig into the code, uh, I'll do a, like a super short uh, overview of the paper, just one minute overview. For those of you who haven't watched the video, go ahead and watch it. I'm going to link it somewhere here. And so let me do a quick recap of what happened so that you have some context before we dig into the code. Okay, so uh, basically in that video, what I, what I explained was I explained uh, how exactly this attention mechanism works, but I explained it on a very high level using these diagrams. Uh, and so from, from this image, we get this 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 attention map and we're going to see how exactly that works by the way if you if you want me to share these squiggles of the paper with you let me know down in the comments i'm going to leave a comment and if i get enough thumbs up i'm going to leave i'm going to think about how i can share these with you uh okay so uh next up we we saw this high level diagram uh of how dino, dino works so basically we have the student branch we have the teacher branch the teacher branch is updated using this exponentially moving average from the student uh, like weights. And we also have a stop gradient here, which means we won't be updating the teacher. Uh, finally, after applying the softmax, we get our distrib output distributions here. And the whole idea is to make these two distributions be the same. Uh, and we do that by, by cross entropy, as you can see here. So the P2 times log of P1. Uh, so the idea is to extract the essence of the image. We input images which had different augmentations as the input to student and teacher. And hopefully we, we want to make sure that the distributions are the same because that's the same image. And that's how we extract the kind of the essence of the image. So that will be a high level explanation. Uh, so we saw the pseudocode. Now we're going to see the actual code. Uh, we saw that we are using, uh, so I mentioned augmentation, so we're using these uh, global crops and we're using these local crops. And we are, again, trying to um, make the model output the same distributions for both of these. Uh, finally, let me see what else I, I had. So I explained how K uh, nearest neighbor algorithm works. And uh, probably in the next video, I'm going to show you how exactly this looks in code, because uh, I think the things I just explained will take like at least an hour to, to, to kind of cover. So let's get back to the code and see how this looks like. Okay, so you've watched the video, you have some context from this short recap. Now let's start digging into the actual code. Okay, so let's put some breakpoint here as I'm going to step through this code and show you exactly how it works. So let's start with this get args parser function. Okay, so I'm gonna just quickly skim over these uh, arguments so that you have some context and idea of which variables are gonna be circulating around the code. So first things first, they have the architecture, we're gonna be using uh, the vision transformer small. Uh, they have many different options, but we're gonna focus on that one. Patch size, I had to increase it to 32 because it was 16 by default and uh, it's for some reason crashing my machine. I still haven't been debugging the amount of memory it's eating up on my GPU, so yeah. Uh, so output dim dimension is just 65,000 uh, 65, and that's the actual output distributions we just saw in the paper overview, which we're going to compare and make sure they are the same for different crops, okay? Uh, then we have uh, just normalized last layer. I'm going to skip this momentum teacher. So 0 0.996. That's the uh, the uh, actual coefficient that's being used in the exponentially moving average when we are forming the teacher weights from the student weights. Uh, again, batch normalization. This is not that important. Uh, warm up temperature, teacher temperature, um, number of epochs. All of these are not that important. That's just a schedule of how the temperature of the teacher is going to change throughout the training. Um, using uh, mixed precision training is going to be on. So I obviously won't be focusing on the optimization uh, stuff in this video. Uh, so uh, weight decay, uh, okay, that's again, we have some schedules. So they have the end and initial value, uh, clipping gradients. So that's also basically when you're updating the, the weights, uh, they are going to use this to kind of clip the norm of, the, of all of the weights before doing an update. We're going to see that in, in a couple of minutes. So number of epochs, 100 by default, whether or not to freeze the last layer. This is just some trick that makes the training a bit easier. Uh, learning rate. Um, so they basically have a linear warm up first and then they have some kind of, a, I think, cosine schedule uh, until the end of the training. So warm up epochs just tells you across uh, how, how many epochs you're, you're, you're taking to do that linear warm up thing. Uh, minimum uh, learning rate, that's the 
pretty much a learning rate at the end of the of the training optimizer they're using atom uh, wide atom so that's because they have distributed training this dyno model is trained on 8 or 16 gpus originally but i have only a single gpu here so that's that's it drop path rate is just an argument that is going to modify the the, the vision transformer architecture uh, then we have the global crop scale so it's going to be from 0 4 to 1 uh, in contrast that to, so I'm going to quickly get back to that one, but we have eight local crops and we have, um, and we have, so local crop scale is going to be from 0, 0, 0.05 to 0 0.4. And that's the same number as here. So that means, um, so that means that uh, this, this for, for the small crops, we're going to take 5% uh, to 40% of the image size. And then we're going to resize that back. But like for the big crops, we're going to take from 40 to 100% of the image. And then we're going to do the resizing to 224. As for the small crops, they're going to be uh, resized to 96, 96 pixels. Uh, again, some details, but like, uh, yeah, this video is going to be about a lot of details. Uh, we're going to use ImageNet. Uh, the thing I did is I, I actually downloaded a small subset of ImageNet because this thing is huge, more than like 150 gigabytes, I think. Um, and uh, so from FastAI, basically it's called ImageNet. Or I don't know how to pronounce it with two T's. And aside from me having to download image net, that small subset of ImageNet, I also had to do a couple of tricks to make this work on Windows because I'm running on Windows machine. So if you want to uh, know about those nitty gritty details and small bugs and problems I had to solve, uh, do join the Discord server. I actually had a thread where as I was in analyzing this code over the past two, two days, I was kind of writing down the, the, the steps I, I took and the problems I, I encountered. Uh, okay, so finally, uh, as I said, ImageNet, uh, where I'm going to save the checkpoints and logs. Um, seed, seed basically serves to uh, make this code reproducible because otherwise there is a lot of randomness and every time you run this code, it's going to have different output and different results and the images are going to be loaded in different order. It makes it easy for me to have some consistency between different runs uh, and it's easier to debug the code. So number of workers, not that important. All of this is just some distributed settings and that's not that vital. Okay, uh, we parse the arguments, we create the output directory where we are going to dump the logs, uh, the log files and the checkpoints. And finally, let's go to the main function and that's train Dino. Um, so again, this is the init distributed mode. It's just a function that's uh, setting up certain settings uh, when you're doing distributed training on eight or 16 GPUs. Again, I'm using um, only one GPU. I had to do some modification because of Windows, uh, but yeah, uh, do check out this Discord server for that. Uh, so we are fixing the random seats. Uh, they're just printing, I'm gonna rise up the console here. So they're basically just printing the, the uh, a uh, shock code, uh, the, the, the hash of this commit with of the code I'm currently running. Uh, then they're just printing some arguments. Uh, QDNM benchmark set to true is just a certain optimization again uh, that makes the code uh, run faster under certain assumptions. Again, not that important. Okay, uh, this is fairly important. Data augmentation Dino. I'm gonna quickly walk you through this code and then I'm gonna step over it uh, in the execution loop. Uh, but basically, uh, as you can see here, they have flip and color jitter uh, transform. So that's a, just a compose. That means we are composing a couple of different transforms. And um, these are organized so that they do the flipping and the color uh, like uh, photometric augmentations. So we have, as you can see here, random horizontal flip with 50% uh, with 50 chance we're going to flip it, uh, either flip it or not flip it. Then we have the, uh, we're going to randomly apply with certain probability, like 80%, uh, this color jitter, which, which is going to change the brightness, the contrast, the saturation, the hue. So basically your photometric augmentations. And finally, random grayscale is with 20% chance we're gonna uh, kind of uh, apply the, the grayscale transformation. Uh, the, then we have normalization. This is your standard stuff. We are converting uh, the, the images to PyTorch tensor. Uh, we are normalizing them and don't get confused by these um, magic numbers, even though it'd be really nice if the authors actually extracted this into a constant because they've been using this all around the place. So this is just your image uh, ImageNet uh, statistics. So the mean and the standard deviation of the ImageNet images. Okay, so for the fun part, this random resize crop is the thing that does the magic of Dino. So global crop scale is again the thing I just mentioned. So from, we're gonna take 40 to 100% of the image. We're gonna 
cut it there, and then we're going to resize it back to 224 by 224 uh, using bicubic interpolation method. Uh, then they're going to apply some photometric augmentations and the flipping, the Gaussian blur, and we're going to normalize the images. Uh, we have a second global um, crop because uh, if, you, if you remember the details from the paper, we have two glo global crops and we have eight local crops, although obviously that's you can, you can experiment with that. Uh, so again, uh, random resize crop, everything is the same. They, they just apply solarization here. Uh, if you're not familiar with solarization, I'm just going to put the image on the screen so you can see a visual example. I guess the image is going to explain that much faster than I will. Uh, finally, we have the, the, the local crops. So that means uh, we are applying the local crop scale. So that means we are now using that 1.5% to 40% of the image. And then we resize that back into 96 by 96 images. So these crops are going to, these images uh, that came from the smaller crop of the image are going to be of smaller resolution, uh, 96 by 96. Again, uh, flipping and color jittering, uh, Gaussian blur normalization, standard stuff. So that's it. Uh, so basically, what's going to happen is this uh, data augmentation dyno uh, is going to be passed to the data set in PyTorch and then every time you try to fetch an image from the data set it's going to apply, it's going to uh, append one crop here, one global crop, the second global crop and then we're going to have iterate in a for loop so eight times and do these small local crops and then we're going to return like a, a list of 10 crops in total. Uh, this is just some code I wrote and we're going to experiment with that a bit later but let me get back to the actual line where we stopped. Okay, so that was the that was the uh, data augmentation of Dino. I think that was a pretty important detail. By the way, I'll be adding timestamps to all of these logical sections, so feel free to skip if you understand some part. You you can just skip to the part you you, you want to understand better. Uh, okay, continuing on, we are creating this data set. Uh, so it's going to link to the as you can see here, ImageNet train uh, subdirectory, and we're going to pass the transform I already mentioned which means every time you fetch an image from this data set, it's going to apply those 10 transformations and we're going to get those 10 crops back. Uh, distributed sampler, so just ignore the distributed part. This is just going to shuffle the images once we input that into the data loader. So as we can see, we have a data set here, we have the sampler, we have, I think, 64 images per GPU. And since I have a single GPU, that's going to be uh, 64 images in total. Uh, number of workers, just optimization stuff, pin memory as well, that just kind of helps you um, basically uh, transfer the images from the CPU to the GPU faster because there's this uh, dedicated slot of the memory. So I'm currently going through every single detail uh, because I'm experimenting, but like uh, I'm later on going to abstract many details. So let me know whether you actually want everything explained or you just want me to cover the main idea. Uh, this is experimental video, so uh, please give me that feedback. And yeah, uh, drop last means because we have a data set of, I, I think, uh, like I have around 9,000 something images because every batch has 64 images as we saw here. Uh, that means that probably the last batch won't have 64 because unless the, the number of images in our training data set is divisible by 64, we're going to have the last batch being less than 64. And this drop less just means we're going to drop the last batch because that can cause some issues probably because of the shape being different. Uh, so that's the reason you sometimes see this drop less set to true. Okay, data loaded. There are, uh, as you can see here, 9,469 images. Okay. Um, this is just some bureaucracy stuff uh, they did because they used to, to name, the, name these models uh, date. Now uh, they're just kind of replacing them with VAT, but the architecture is already VAT small, so nothing's going to happen there. Um, so basically, this says that so VATs is just a, like a shorthand notation for the all of the vision transformer models that exist in this vision transformer pi file. So we're going to, because we are vision transformer, we're going to enter this if statement. And we're going to, as you can see here, we're going to form. So this statement here may confuse you. So this is just a list of all of the different uh, like uh, functions from this vision transformer file. And this is just going to instantiate the model. And we're going to instantiate it with the 32 by 32. So the patch will be 32 by 32 pixels. And we're going to use this uh, drop path rate of 0 0.1. So the quickest way you can understand how this thing, uh, what this thing does is just put a print st statement in there, do this, uh, like just print the dictionary, uh, set a breakpoint there, stop the code, re-execute again, and we're going to see what happens there. So I'm going to just skip these, skip these. I'm going to get here. I'm going to open the console. And after I print this, you're going to see 
uh, whoops, bunch of stuff. And as you can see here, it's actually printing this whole vision transformer pi file. And the thing is, uh, it's some of the some of the functions are organized into dictionaries. So this is just your Python stuff. So that means we're gonna have somewhere in here, we're gonna have uh, like these functions, let me let me jump to that file. So we're gonna have somewhere in there, we're gonna have this VAT small uh, function. And then we're gonna pass the patch size and uh, additional we are passing that drop path uh, coefficient. So that's the, the thing that happens there. So basically, we're instantiating the VAT small model here. Uh, then we're doing the same thing for the teacher network. So that was a student network, we have the teacher network. And since we're using uh, Vision Transformer small, the embedding dimension is going to be 384. Uh, that's just the hyperparameter they, they kind of decided to use. Okay, so they have in these other branches, they're using Excite and some other stuff we don't care about. So um, now this is uh, another important part. Basically, uh, what they do is they, they wrap the student network, so this is the Vision Transformer, and they put this Dino head on top of it. So Dino head is just a simple MLP uh, with some additional tweaks, and I'm gonna jump into those details right now. So the, the main point is they are forming uh, this this MLP, and since number of layers is three by default, that means the MLP is gonna have three linear layers. That means we're gonna uh, execute the else branch, and we're gonna form the MLP that just consists out of, as you can see here, we, we have some potentially some batch norms, potentially some uh, like JLU, uh, like uh, activation functions. Uh, but most of all, most importantly, we have this linear function. Uh, so basically, it's an MLP. Uh, and then we just initialize the way it's using this self apply. Uh, that's an inbuilt uh, function that's a part of this NN module uh, class. And uh, then we're going to form the last layer uh, by creating yet another linear layer. And the linear layer is going to have so the output dimension here is that 65,000 something. So that's the actual output of the whole uh, pipeline. And then we're going to compare those outputs by cross entropy later on. So that's the last layer. Uh, the interesting part here is this weight norm is just a hook function. Uh, what it does is uh, once you put this weight G to all of ones, that means uh, they're going to normalize the actual linear layer. So it's just going to make sure that the L2 norm of the weights of that linear layer are equal to one. That's basically it. And if they decide to do th this normalization of the last layer, if this is set to true, then as you can see here, the, 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 those gradients are gonna be set to false, which means the following. During the training, those uh, those weights will not, will not be updated, which means that the L2 norm is gonna be kept at one, uh, which means we're normalizing the last layer, hence the norm last layer. I, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. So again, simple MLP. Uh, on top of it, we have the last layer, which has the 65,000 uh, something uh, number of neurons as the output, and that's it. Optionally, we have these uh, these uh, like normalization stuff. Okay, getting back here. So that's the dino head. We stick it on top of the student, and uh, one additional detail which we need to go through. This is this multi-crop wrapper. Again, I have timestamps, just jump if, you don't, if you're not interested into this section. Uh, so the multi-crop wrapper, what it does is the following. Um, no, I'm, I'm actually just gonna put a breakpoint here and then after we, we get to this part, we, we'll understand what multi-crop wrapper does. But basically, on a high level for now, it's basically just gonna deal with those crops, pass them through the, the pipeline, and then out comes the result from the student, the final, the final output, and the final output from the teacher. We'll see that in a, in a, w once we, we hit that part of the code. Okay, uh, getting back here, so that was how we formed stu the student part. So again, it's a multi-crop wrapper around student, which is vision transformer, and dino head, which is MLP. Same thing goes for, for the teacher. We have teacher, we have dino head, and that's it. S some minor differences like whether we are not, we are normalizing the last layer or not, but that's it. And we are not using the batch normalization, so this is, uh, there is no batch normalization in this whole pipeline, which is something we, we strive for. Um, okay. Uh, we're just pushing the, the student and teacher to the GPU, that's this dot CUDA, that, that's what it means. And finally, uh, because as I said, we don't have any, any batch norms, uh, that means we're gonna enter the else branch, and that means that uh, the teacher network will not be using this distributed data parallel, which is just a wrapper uh, that makes it easy to train these models in a distributed fashion. Uh, okay, 
Uh, continuing on, we wrap the student network uh, into this distributed data parallel, by, but they only have a single GPU here. So the index zero means the default GPU you have on your system. I have a RTX 2080, so that's it. Uh, then we are loading the, as you can see here, we are loading the state dictionary directly from the student uh, module. So, and they say here nicely, teacher and student start with the same weights. So initially, we're going to start with the same weights. Later on, we're going to use this exponentially moving average to update the teacher weights. Uh, finally, as I said, there is a stop gradient. Uh, if you saw the, the diagram, there is a stop gradient. And this is how you implement the stop gradient in PyTorch. You basically just iterate through all of the uh, like uh, parameters and you set their gradients to false. So that means it won't be trainable. I'm going to skip, skip all of this, just uh, F9. And that's it. So we, we, we have an output here. Uh, the student and teacher are built. They're both vision transformer small networks. Okay, this part is fairly important, and I'm gonna probably uh, step through it a bit later. But let me just give you a glimpse. So I'm gonna put uh, like a like a breakpoint here in the forward function, and as you can see here, it's just accumulating the parameters that be passed in the init function. Uh, it's just registering this uh, center vector. So if uh, register buffer, what it does, it makes sure that the this 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 vector here uh, is a part of the state dictionary, even though it's not trainable. So this center vector will not be trainable. We're not going to update it using gradients. We're going to update it using the exponentially moving average again. So that's the reason they're using register buffer. So it's not trainable. So it's not a model parameter in the PyTorch uh, like uh, terminology. And but we still need it in the actual state dictionary of the model. Um, okay, finally, they have some teacher temperature schedule. So with the current parameters, this is actually going to return 0 0.04 uh, throughout all of this, all of the epochs, but what it's it's kind of envisioned to have a linear ramp up here, although that's not that important. Let's get back to the dyno loss. Okay, I'm going to step over this and going to later, uh, once we are actually using the dyno loss, I'm going to step through the forward function. Um, this just not that important. Uh, whether we are regularizing or not regularizing certain parameters of the student network, we're gonna uh, create the atom uh, wide optimizer. And finally, because we're using the mixed precision training, uh, we're just going to uh, wrap this create this uh, FP 16. So that means we're using 16 bits training these uh, models. Okay, here they're just creating uh, schedulers for the learning rate. So it's going to be a cosine scheduler. Um, then we have a uh, weight decay schedule against co cosine scheduler. And finally, momentum scheduler. Uh, basically, uh, that's the thing that uh, is used to update the teacher uh, weights using the student weights. So that's that parameter. Uh, and again, it's just a cosine scheduler. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I think we're, we're good to go. We're getting closer to the actual training loop. Uh, this already took a lot of time. So uh, we're just going to this this restart uh, from checkpoint. I think we're going to skip it because we don't have any checkpoints for now. So I just put a breakpoint there. We're going to enter it. Okay, let me step over, step over. Okay. And we're going to just return from that function since we have don't have any checkpoints. Okay, so that's just a dummy for now. Um, start epoch is going to start with zero. We're just uh, logging the starting time, just some bureaucracy stuff. And finally, here is the main loop. Okay, we're, we are here. So we're starting from the epoch zero, we're going to run for 100 epochs. And uh, ignore this line, this is just something that has to do with this distributed sampler, otherwise, you wouldn't have this line. Um, so this is the actual meat of the whole whole script. So it's training one epoch is going to train the, the dyno for one epoch. And then later on, we're just going to have some some logging, nothing, nothing very fancy. So uh, I'm going to step into this F7. And let's see how this function looks like. Okay, so metric logger, not that important again. Uh, okay, this is where the fun starts. So we have the data loader. And we're going to fetch like this images. So this images is going to be a list of 10 elements. And each element is going to be a batch of images. So each element is going to be 64 images. So that means so because 10 elements because it, as if you remember, we have two global crops, we have eight local crops. So that means if we take like the zeroth element of this images list, that's those are the global crops and we have 64 images. And if we take uh, like the second index, that means that's the first local crop. Uh, like set of images, a batch of local crops. And so as you can see here, I just 
we wrote some code here to make this a bit faster. I'm gonna stop the code execution and I'm gonna rerun it again. I'll uh, I'll need to make another tweak to make this work. So that's that means I'm gonna have to add additional crop. Uh, so what this does is we are just going to preserve the image as it is without doing any any crops. So that's just the reference image and that was that's going to be prepended as the first crop. So now we have 11 crops. And hopefully now this is going to work. Let me let me let me run this. Uh, let me go back to the code where we were. Okay, here we are. So what I'm doing here is as you remember, I prepended uh, this original image. Uh, so now we have 11 elements instead of 10. And this zero will just be indexing the original images. And I'm just gonna fetch like one image out of those 64 images, gonna convert those to NumPy, do some move axis because the channel is actually channel first. And now we, we, we want to have channel last for for the plot function of matplotlib. So second line, what it does is it will extract the global crop. So remember, now the the, the, the index one and zero, um, the index one and two are actually uh, referencing the global crops. And again, I'm going to take just one single image. Finally, we have the local crop. So index three through 10 are all going to contain local crops. So I'm just going to take one arbitrary local crop. And finally, let's let's plot those uh, results. So um, here you can see the the original image, uh, just some dude playing golf. So I'm going to now exit that remember that image. And now we're going to see a global crop. As you can see, it's uh, there is a crop, but there is also severe solarization and other photometric effects. So you can really see it perfectly. But let's see the, the local crop. So the local crop is as you can see, now it's totally clear, we're just taking a single small crop, and we're resizing it into this image of 96 by 96. And we also apply some augmentations here. So that's it. That's the now you have an understanding of how images look like. And I encourage you when you're debugging and understanding the code, do make these visualizations as much as possible because that helps you understand what's going on in your code. Uh, that plus print statement, I guess that's pretty much how I debug the code, although there are sometimes more elegant ways to do it. Okay. So um, let's let's continue here. So okay, this line is just forming a global step depending on the epoch we are in, depending on the number of images in the data set depending on the current iteration inside of this uh, inside of this loop. Okay, so that's just global step. And um, then what they're going to do here is depending on the schedule current schedule, we're going to update the weight decay and learning rate, uh, depending on these param groups, it's not that important, I'm just going to skip that part. So we're just adapting the weight decay and learning rate depending on the current step. Okay, so skipping that we're putting the images on the GPU. So that's this step. Let me just whoops, let me just skip over that. Uh, and finally, this part uh, is just a context context manager, because we have this mixed precision training, and it's not none. So we're gonna uh, enter this, but now it's not going to work because I prepended all of this. So I'm just gonna quickly comment this out. Uh, and comment this out, and I'm gonna restart the training and get back to you. Okay, here we are. Uh, so this is as I said, very important step, we're taking the global crops, and we're passing only the global crops through the teacher to get the teacher output. And let's see. So analyzing the shape of the output is super important. I can't stress that enough. So let's now see whoops, I have a okay, so we have a multi crop wrapper. Okay, this is the part we, we, we want to understand a little bit better. Um, so x is just a list of two elements, again, uh, each contains a batch of crops. These are global crops. So because it's a list, we're going to skip this part. So this is just a fancy way of separating the global from the local crops. And it doesn't make much sense for the teacher network, because it's only using global crops. So we're just going to have number two here. So as you can see here, uh, index crops just has number two, uh, this is going to make more sense for the for the student network. So now what we do is uh, we iterate here, and we're going to take, as you can see from zero to two, so that means we're going to concatenate all of those uh, global crops, we have 64 images in one in one in one element, we have 64 images in the second one, we're just going to concatenate them. And now we have 128 images uh, in a single tensor. And then we're going to pass that through the backbone, which is basically the vision transformer uh, of the teacher network. So that's going to form what so the, the, the let, let's try and figure out the shape. So 128. And because we are outputting uh, only the CLS token. So that will be the output from the vision transformer. So it has 384 
uh, like uh, neurons, right? So we're gonna have hopefully um, what? So 128 times 384. Okay, let's let's see whether the prediction was right. So it's kind of good to have these predictions and then uh, tweak your brain depending on whether you made made a mistake or not. I guess that's a similar way how these neural networks work. So the out shape here, as you can see, the shape is 128 um, comma 384. So that's it. I'm gonna skip this part, and now we're gonna, gonna this is going to accumulate the 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 output, and this will again make more sense for the student network. Now it's just gonna uh, we're gonna just copy paste pretty much this output from the vision transformer here, and that's it. We're gonna exit the loop, and now this is the actual dino head. So this is the MLP, and now we, after passing it here, we're gonna end up with those 65,000 something. So we're gonna have 128 times 65,000 uh, something. Let's let's see whether that that's true. Okay. Uh, whoops. Let me get out of here. Teacher output. Let's see whether the teacher output is as I predicted. So teacher output. Let me kind of. Uh, so 128, 65,000, that's it. So the predictions were right. So now, this is the interesting part. We have a student network and we are passing both the global crops as well as the local crops. So let's enter the loop again. Again, it's a list, so we're gonna sk skip this. And now it's a bit more interesting. So it's gonna make, uh, return the IDs where the resolution changes. So we have 20, remember the global crops are 20, 224 by 224 and the local crops are 96 by 96. So what this line of code actually does is it finds a separation and returns the indices uh, of the place where the resolution changes. So it's going to return, as you, as you will soon see, 2 and 10, I think, or something like that. Yeah, 2 and 10. So that's because after 2, we drop to small resolution, and then we keep the small resolution until the end. And that's 10 crops. So now we are iterating again. As you can see here, we're first going to pass 0 through 2. So that's global crops. Uh, and we're going to pass that to the... the the network here so that's going to be again 128 so that was that is going to be as you can see here 128 384 uh, and we're just going to concatenate that with this output which is just a placeholder variable you can see here it's tor torch empty and we're just concatenating the results to it and that's it now we're going to put this the, the start index is now going to be 2 and the end index is going to be 10 so now we're passing 2 through 10 which means we are fetching the local crops. We are concatenating them, so we're gonna form what? Like, let me let me do it. Like calculator. We have eight crops. All of these have what? Uh, 64, uh, 64 images. So that's 512. So let's see whether that's true. So we have 512, and we're gonna expect the output 512 times uh, 384. So let's see whether that's true. So we have out output variable 512 384. That's it. So everything works as we expect. So let's continue here. Again, we're just concatenating these. So now we're gonna concatenate these with the with the outputs from the from the global crops, and that means we're gonna have what like uh, 512 for, for the uh, global crops plus 100, 128. So 512 was for the for the local crops. 128 is for the uh, global crops. So that's 640. So if we do that we're gonna see that the output is, let me see here. So the output is 640, 384. Okay, that's it. Let's continue. We're gonna exit the loop. We're gonna pass all of these through the MLP. And that means we're gonna end up with, um, instead of 384, we're gonna have those 65,000 something uh, activations. So that's it. That's the whole trick. Let me again exit this thing. Okay, exit, come on, come on, come on. This success. Okay, so this is the last important detail. Let's just analyze the dino loss and that's pretty much it. You now should be able to understand the training. Um, so here what, hap what happens, we, have, we take the student outputs and remember that's again uh, 600 something times 65,000 something. So 640 times 65,000 and we're just going to scale it with this temperature coefficient. So remember that's remember from the diagram from the paper that's what they are doing. Uh, now they're gonna chunk this into ten pieces because remember we have ten different crops. So this is just a way to take these 640 uh, outputs and kind of cluster them into uh, sem semantically meaningful categories. So that means global crops and local crops. So we're gonna see that the student out. Let's find that variable. 
So that's student out here. Let me expand it. We have 640 and now we're going to have a list of 10 elements and every element will have 64 images as it should be. So as you can see here, 10 elements in the list and every single one contains 64 images. That's it. We do a similar thing for the teacher network. We have some temperature stuff. We have the centering of the output and then we divide by the temperature across the feature dimension. So that means across the uh, that vector that has 65,000 activations, we're going to do the, the softmax across it. And then we do the detaching because, again, we're not training teacher network. And we trunk it into two because, remember, we have uh, two global crops being passed through the teacher network. So teacher out, let me just expand that variable. So teacher out has uh, 128. It's going to be split into two elements. Each will have 64 images. So let's step over it. And as you can see here, two elements, 64 images each. So that's it. So now we have those different views and now we're gonna do the actual uh, like loss. So what is happening here is we are taking uh, a single, so this is gonna be a single like a uh, global crop and it's gonna contain a batch of images for that global crop. And then, so this just makes sure we are not operating on the same view. So that's what, where we're gonna skip in the first iteration because both are zero. So that means both are indexing the same global crop. And now in the second iteration, this is gonna be one. We're gonna skip that. And what happens now is we're gonna take a batch of images, so 64 images from the, from the, from the second global crop. And we're gonna contrast it with Q, which is the, the first global crop. And that means, and we're gonna do simple cross entropy here. So that's Q uh, times the log of the student view. Softmax is here because we already we already done softmax for the teacher network. So we have to do softmax and then we have to apply log and then we have just cross entropy and that's it. So focusing on dimensions here on the shape again. So if we take expand the Q variable, you can see it's 64 times 65,000. The same thing is gonna be for this student view. So we have 64 images here and here and we have their outputs and we're just gonna make sure that the distributions are the same for all of these 64 images. And then what we're gonna do is um, basically uh, sum it up. So we're gonna sum up across the that dimension, the, the dimension number one, and then this mean will do the averaging across the second dimension and that's gonna end up uh, with a scalar. So after we do this and this, we end up with a scalar and that's it. That's pretty much it. Now we iterate through every single combination of views. So we have, we iterate through different global crops here. We iterate through both the global and local crops here. We take those views, we do the cross entropy, and that's how we train this whole thing, okay? And the final last detail is we are updating this, uh, this center vector, which is used as you remember here. So the self center is gonna be updated using the teacher outputs. Uh, in this function here, but I'm gonna skip it. Uh, you can analyze it yourself, it's fairly simple. Uh, it's basically following the formula from the paper. Uh, we're doing the every, uh, exponentially moving average update of the, of the center vector, that's it. Okay, uh, let's exit this thing, let's exit this thing, and that's it. We now have just the bureaucracy stuff, so we uh, clear the gradients of the, of the model. Uh, we are going to now do uh, backward, which is going to calculate the gradients throughout the whole network of all of the parameters that are obviously uh, trainable. Uh, we're going to do some uh, clipping of gradients basically here. Uh, this line is just going to freeze uh, and not train the last layer. If you remember, there was this parameter called, uh, what's the name of it? Freeze. So since this uh, freeze last layer is only one, and current epoch is uh, zero, that means we're actually going to freeze the last layer of the model, but that's again, a small optimization trick uh, to make this uh, thing more stable and trainable. Uh, finally, we do the step, that means we're gonna actually update the, the weights, and that's it. Just some details around mixed uh, precision training, nothing that spectacular. Uh, finally, we take the, the, the uh, moment value depending on the on the uh, epoch we are in, on the global step we are in, uh, and this is the part where we are updating the teacher networks uh, using the uh, student uh, weights. So we are basically doing uh, exponential moving average uh, here. So as you can see, the teacher weights are going to be multiplied by m, which is the this momentum parameter, and we're going to add up one minus m times the weights from the student network. And you can see it on the formula on the screen. 
and that's that's pretty much it. Okay, that was it. That was pretty much the the, the core parts of the training. Everything else is just logging, uh, dumping those log files and checkpoints. This was the the very meat of the Dino training and how the training looks like. Again, any feedback is appreciated. The more feedback I receive, the the better I'll know for the next time how to make these videos. <laughs> okay, I want to end this video by showing you this visualize attention function. Let's quickly run through how this thing works. And I think it's fairly, fairly much simpler compared to the training. So let's kind of uh, dig into it. I'm gonna put a breakpoint here, I'm gonna start debugging. And let's see what happens. Okay, again, uh, we're using uh, VAT small patch size eight, uh, no pre train weights. Uh, this is not that important. We have some image path, uh, I already uh, inputted the path to this image. So we're going to be using this image here, this, this bird image. And uh, so that's the image path image size is going to be 480. Not that important. Again, we're just going to dump in the current directory. Uh, threshold is also not that important for now. Let me see what I am using currently. So my current threshold is 0 0.1. Uh, I'm actually going to delete this. So I'm going to just input the image path here, as you can see. And now let's apply this and restart the code again, jumping to here. Okay, I'm going to jump here. Let's see here. So uh, device if I have if you have GPU, it's going to be using GPU. So it's CUDA here for me, I have a GPU. So we're going to form, uh, we, we're going to create a model. So this is the same line as in Dyna training code. So we're going to basically instantiate the vision transformer small, uh, because of this string with patch size eight and zero classes means it won't have the output head It's just going to have the the, the final layer is going to be just a bunch of tokens, the CLS tokens and all of the other tokens, but no, no actual linear uh, classifier head. Okay, let's do this. So these lines, we're just gonna uh, freeze the the model uh, parameters, that means we are not we're going to set them to not trainable. So that means this model is just going to be used as is no training involved. Uh, eval evaluation mode uh, that basically sets up depending whether you have dropout or batch norm, this thing can uh, change the the those layers. And that's why it's important when you're using a model in an inference mode to uh, call this eval function. Uh, we're going to push the device to the GPU to make things a bit faster. And finally, because I don't have any pre trained weights, we're just going to uh, fetch from a certain URL, as you can see here, we form an URL we uh, fetch those from the torch hub, we're gonna just concatenate the URL to this uh, repository. And we're gonna fetch the state dict, and we're gonna load the state dictionary. So the download actually already happened on my local machine. So it's just fetching it from the local storage instead of uh, having to go to the cloud. Okay, my image, uh, the image name was uh, like incorrect. So I had to tweak that in the settings. And now I rerun the code. And here we are again. So because we have an image path, we're gonna open it load the image, we're going to load the image, we're going to do some transformations. So we're going to resize the image into 480 by 480. We're going to convert it into tensor. And again, here is here are these uh, numbers, we already saw the mag the magic numbers, they just basically represent the, the mean and standard deviation of the image net data set. Um, so okay, so after that, we're going to transform the image. So now we have a tensor that's normalized and resized, as you can see here. Finally, we make sure that it's divisible by the patch size. So the patch size is currently what eight. So we're gonna uh, make sure that the width and height are are, are actually uh, div divisible by eight. And now we're gonna crop the image here if necessary and unsqueeze zero means we're just gonna add another di dimension uh, in the front. So that's just some PyTorch uh, like uh, stuff. And if we take a look at the image dimension here, so let's take a look at the shape. So the shape is just three 480 480. And after we execute this line it's going to be one three 480 480. So that's the unsqueeze part. Uh, then we're gonna divide the resolution by the patch size. So this will tell you how many tokens you have across the width dimension. And we have 60. And here again, we have 60 because remember, it's 480 uh, times 480 image. Uh, finally, what this does, it's going to uh, fetch from the vision transformer, it's going to get the, the, the self attention of the image. So we're going to take the image, we're going to uh, like send it to the GPU because the model is also in GPU. So you don't want to have a discrepancy there. We're going to feed the image into the model. 
and it's going to take from the last layer is going to return not the tokens, it's going to return the attention coefficients. So that means the following. So remember, we have 60 times 60 uh, tokens, as we just saw up there. So we have 60 here and 60 here. So that means we have 300, 3,600 tokens in, in, in total, plus one for the CLS token. So that's 3,601. 3, so the attention uh, dimension we should expect should be uh, basically three. 3,601 times 3,601 3, 3, and we also have uh, six attention heads so we're gonna have something like six times this number here so that's the the the, the numbers I'm the shape I'm expecting uh, so if I step over and after we now, now let's find the attentions variable so the shape is as you can see here six 3,600 blah, blah blah the number we expected basically plus the uh, this one as the first dimension again uh, those are just some idiosyncrasies of PyTorch quick recap how those were formed is basically we have so we have as I said 3,601 tokens you take a single token and you basically form its query and then you do a dot product a scale dot product with all of the other keys and that's why we have 3,601 attention coefficients for that single token but since we have 3601 tokens we're going to have this 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 shape here so hopefully that's clear so as you can see here we extract the number of heads the number of heads is 6 uh, and now what we do here is we take we just extract this is just because of one we take this zero here uh, and then we take all of the heads but we take only the zeroth token uh, which means CLS token and we take one through the end, which means we find the attention coefficients that the CLS has across all of the other, let's call them spatial tokens. So that's the whole idea there. So that, that's why we have these numbers here. So let's see what what is the shape we're expecting. We, we're expecting something like, let me write down here, maybe it's easier to see. So we're expecting like six, uh, and then we expect, because we're taking just the CLS token, uh, so we expect six, 300, uh, 3,600. So that's the shape we're, we're actually expecting after after this uh, this line of code. So let's see whether that's true. So attentions, as you can see here, that's that's the actual number, 6, 3,600. Okay, I'm just gonna ignore this threshold part and we're just gonna, going to reshape uh, the those attentions into, uh, into different shapes. So instead of having it flattened out, we're gonna return it back to 60, 60. Uh, and finally, this is just a nearest neighbor interpolation, which means you're going to take uh, that uh, token, whatever the coefficient is, we're just going to replicate the coefficient into the 8 times 8 pixels because that was the original image shape so that we can visualize the actual attention. So that's why we need the interpolation part. Uh, finally, just some making some directories, uh, saving the original image. And finally, here in this in this section here, we're going to, as you can see here, we're going to take uh, the attentions for every single head and save them in an image. So let me just kind of do F9 there. And we're going to end up having six images, which I'm going to show you in a second. And finally, I'm going to ignore this threshold in part again. And that's, that's pretty much it. And here are the attention uh, maps we got. So here you can see the bird image every single head has different attention pattern and that's it and these are the images you you you, you saw in the actual paper now you you know how they are calculated and visualized awesome this was a long video hopefully you liked it if you did share it out with a friend subscribe hit that bell icon and uh join the discord community until next time bye bye